In this video, I'm going to explain what flat feet really are. I'll cover four helpful foot strengthening exercises, as well as other important exercise related factors that need to be considered when trying to fix flat feet. Let's get started. Flat feet have been found to be the most prevalent foot problem in the US. Now, just to be clear, there are two types of flat feet, one that is acquired and one that is actually a deformity. This was explained in a recent podcast we did with Dr. Peter Francis, a top researcher in barefoot running and rehabilitation. Let's check it out. On our Instagram, we put out a poll and we basically just asked, do you have flat feet? And 52% um, of the near 1,000 respondents voted yes. So they identify themselves as, as having flat feet. And I, I was quite surprised at the number. Do you believe that this is a widespread problem? And do you think that it, it's... Um, it relates to, you know, wearing shoes when we're young and, um, you know, not being able to build up those structures properly. I would be interested to see how many of them actually have flat feet um, mm -hmm. because many of the changes um, that we see in arch height and so on are often due to changes occurring due to intrinsic foot muscle weakness. And so therefore it's not a true um, flat foot, you could say. So what Dr. Francis is saying here is that we seldom see flat feet deformities in which the foot arch is not present at all. What we are actually seeing on a widespread scale is an acquired flat foot, also known as flexible flat foot or fallen arches. In this case, the foot arch is present, but does not tolerate dynamic movement. In other words, the inbuilt structures fail to maintain an arch out of weakness causing the foot arch to collapse and flatten under load. Fortunately, this common form of flat foot can be reversed with the right exercises and techniques, which we will touch on in this video. First, it is important to recognize that the feet have more than 100 muscles, ligaments and tendons spread across four layers. These four layers of stabilizing structures control the amount of foot arch deformation in each step. Therefore, if these layers of muscles and connective tissues are weak or unresponsive, the integrity of the foot arch is lost, which usually results in a collapsed arch shape we described earlier as acquired flat feet. To prove just how crucial the muscles of the foot are at forming a foot arch, the authors of one study injected anesthetic into the foot, paralyzing the intrinsic muscles. The results were a 50% reduction in dynamic arch height once the anesthetic was applied. So as we can see from the study, it is impossible to maintain a robust foot arch without properly functioning foot muscles. Therefore, it is imperative to strengthen the internal muscles of the feet in order to reduce the presence of flat feet. We can do this in the following three ways. The first is by smashing that like button, which will let the YouTube algorithm know to suggest this video to more people who will benefit from the second and third ways of strengthening their feet. With that done, the second way to strengthen the muscles of the feet is by wearing barefoot shoes or being completely barefoot as much as possible. You see, modern shoes with their thick soles and arch cushioning support the feet too much to the point where the innate structures start to weaken. We could thus compare the functioning of the foot's bony structures to that of the spine and its surrounding musculature like the core, which is meant to stabilize it. Continuing this thought, the ankles then act in the same way as the hip. It is meant to hinge and generate the moving forces. This means that just as we shouldn't rely on a weightlifting belt to always stabilize the spine, so we shouldn't rely on modern footwear or inner soles to stabilize our feet. If you want to learn more about this concept, I highly recommend the paper titled The Foot Core System, A New Paradigm for Understanding Intrinsic Foot Muscle. It will be referenced in the blog version of this video, which can be found in the description down below. There is a lot more research available to back up this correlation between cushioned and supportive shoe use and flat feet. For example, in one study in which 1,846 people were surveyed, it was found that children who wore shoes for more than eight hours a day before the age of six had a significantly higher prevalence of flat feet later in life than those who were shod for fewer hours at a young age. Another study in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery in which 2,300 children were surveyed, it was found that flat feet were more prevalent amongst those who predominantly wore closed shoes rather than slippers and sandals. So being barefoot or utilizing barefoot shoes serves as a kind of gym for the feet, if you will. 
because as soon as support is taken away, the muscles and other supportive structures of the feet are forced to work hard to stabilize the body during motion. If you wanna check out the barefoot shoes we use, follow the links down below. Okay, so if we combine barefoot movement with dedicated foot strengthening exercises, this is where the magic happens. For example, in a study conducted in 2018, Hutchinson and colleagues found that eight weeks of dedicated foot strengthening exercises combined with two hours per day of barefoot motion improved foot function in 23 participants with severe flat feet. So let's then run through four of some of the best foot strengthening exercises. The first is towel grabs. Start by placing a small hand towel on a slippery surface such as a tiled floor. Then try to grab the far end of the towel with your toes and slowly pull it closer to you. Then smooth out the towel and repeat with the opposite foot. It's not uncommon for the feet to cramp up while doing this exercise in the beginning. It's just a sign that the feet muscles need to be strengthened. The second exercise is heel raises. Unlike calf raises, these particular ones don't require a large range of motion to be effective at strengthening the arch of the foot. It's just important to perform the exercise with control so that the foot muscles are utilized instead of shifting the load onto the calves. The third exercise is a single leg hop. This is a slightly more difficult exercise because each foot will have to bear the brunt of the entire body weight. The most common mistake made with this exercise is to allow the foot to collapse inwards. This motion puts undue strain on the tissues in this area. So to prevent this problem from occurring, it's important to take very small hops at first and to focus on maintaining an arch. Over time, as strength and control is built up in these areas, the jumps can become more pronounced. The fourth and final is a single leg balance. The objective is to maintain the tripod foot position whereby the big toe, pinky toe and heel are all in contact with the ground at the same time while maintaining the foot arch. So if the foot loses stability and pronates inwards too much, then the arch will flatten and the pinky toe will lift. By contrast, if too much compensation is made in the opposite direction, then the body weight will shift to the outside of the foot, causing the big toe to lift and lose connection with the ground. To increase the difficulty of this exercise, one can swing the other leg to increase the stability demands of the supporting foot. A more advanced version of this exercise is wobble ball training. These devices, which can be used at home, have been found to target all the small stabilizing muscles in the feet and around the ankles. Now, while these exercises are great to get you started on the journey of building stronger foot arches and reversing the presence of flat feet, there is a lot more to it than just this. This is why we developed the Strong Feet Strong Foundation program, which includes many more foot strengthening exercises for both the beginner and advanced athletes, each with a detailed video tutorial of how to do them properly. Furthermore, the program covers all the other routines involved in building strong feet, such as strengthening the connection between the feet and glutes. To show just how integral the glute muscles are to helping form a proper foot arch, one can perform a basic experiment. Stand upright in a relaxed posture with the feet pointed straight. Then, while looking down at your foot arches, place your hands on your bum and squeeze your glute muscles. The hands are used as a sensory feedback tool in this instance, so feel whether or not the glutes are being squeezed properly. Relax again, then proceed to squeeze the glutes a second time. Repeat this process over and over again. So what happened to the feet? What you should see and feel is that your foot arches should increase in height every time you squeeze your gluteal muscles. This little experiment shows just how interconnected the hips and glutes are with the feet downstream. What is happening here is that as the glutes fire, they externally rotate the hips, which translates down into a supinated foot position and a strong arch. In contrast, when the gluteal muscles are weak or inactive, it causes the hip joints to internally rotate, causing the foot to overpronate into that flattened arch position. Therefore, the feet must work synergistically with the glutes in order to get the best results. This was actually proven in a study published in the Journal of Physical Therapy Science comparing two groups with fallen arches. One group was restricted to doing only foot strengthening exercises, while the other group was allowed to do both foot strengthening exercises and glute strengthening exercises. After the intervention, the group that performed both glute strength work and foot exercises improved their arch height significantly more than the group that performed 
only foot strengthening exercises. The glute exercise used in the study entailed laying prone or on the stomach with the knees bent 90 degrees and the underfeet pointed towards the sky. Then one knee was lifted slightly off the ground which extended the hip, thus activating the glutes. Just be careful not to lift the knee too high because this will cause the lower back to hyperextend which places too much stress on the spine over time. Now while this glute strengthening exercise is great to get the bum muscles fired up in isolation, there are specific techniques to get the glutes and feet communicating and working together as one unit. After all, the essence of athleticism is when the whole body is able to work together as one integrated system in an efficient manner while performing a given task. These specialized techniques can be found in our Strong Feet, Strong Foundation program. So in conclusion, acquired flat feet or fallen arches is a widespread issue that can be fixed with the right exercises and techniques. While we covered only some of the issues relating to flat feet in this video, we will be creating more content around this topic in the future. So subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted when we do. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm your host Chris and until next time, cheers.